bill is set down for second reading. No uh, bills have been introduced. The House comes to oral questions. Question number one in the name of the Honourable Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does she have confidence in all her ministers? Mr Speaker. The right honourable Prime Mr. Minister. Mr Speaker, Marlo ila male ear. Yes. When was she or her office first advised that there was a staffing matter in Honourable Mecca Faitiri's office requiring investigation by ministerial services? Uh, Mr Speaker, as I've said, I do want to keep the detail uh, of this issue with ministerial services where it belongs as an employment matter. Uh, I, uh, though, I can say that uh, I was informed uh, my recollection was uh, last Wednesday night, uh, if my memory serves best, and of course within a 24-hour period we instigated um, the, uh, the minister offered up to stand aside while the investigation took place. Who told her on Wednesday night? Was it the minister herself or someone else, and if so, who? Uh, Mr. Mr Speaker, I don't want to get into the details of something that is being inquired into. Um, by ministerial services. That is the best place for this investigation to take place. It is entirely appropriate that that is how it is dealt with. Did the minister tell you? Did the minister tell you? Hmm. Or tell uh, the Prime Minister? Uh, Mr Speaker, I've made it clear that obviously I've had a conversation with the minister directly about it. She has said she wants this dealt with openly, transparently. Uh, that is what we're doing. That is why she offered up to stand aside while this was dealt with, but it is being dealt with by ministerial services. That's the best place for it to be dealt with. If the minister has, uh, the opposition leader has a range of specific questions around dates and times, he's most welcome to put those in writing. Well, was it uh, the minister that told the prime minister or was it someone else? Mr Speaker, this is an issue that is being dealt with, rightly so, by ministerial services. That is the best place for it to be dealt with. I believe in natural justice. I also want to protect the privacy of individuals who are involved, and that's why we're dealing with it the most appropriate way possible. Oh, have Did The Honourable Simon Bridges. Did she ask the Honourable Mika Faiti directly what happened? It is fair to say that the allegation is contested, which is why it's being dealt with by ministerial services, and that is appropriate. Does she stand by her reported statements that Labor monitored staff turnover uh, in its minister's office? If so, how is this monitoring undertaken? Uh, Mr Speaker, as would be the case for um, the member when he was in office, uh, obviously uh, the ministerial services are aware of staff turnover and the different circumstances that lead to staff turnover. When it's in uh, opposition, then it's parliamentary services that play that role. How will her government foster a more open and democratic society, as outlined in the speech from the throne, when she has had to demote her Minister for Open Government for not being open and transparent in her answers to written questions. Oh. Uh, Mr S uh, Speaker, that is exactly why the Minister has had to be the brunt of consequences of not uh, holding her own standards. And on her own measure, she has acknowledged that those errors led to a perception that she wasn't open uh, in her actions, which is why she absolutely accepted and offered up the role of open government. Did she ask Claire Curran why she had not noted her meeting with Derek Handley in her diary, considering just one week prior to that meeting she had been asked an oral question in the House about her failure to record her breakfast meeting with Carol Hirschfeld? Mr Speaker, I've been asked this question um, uh, via the media and have uh, given the same answer I'm happy to give to the House. The member, of course, recalls the meeting she had. Uh, it wasn't recorded, uh, and that's something that she acknowledges was a complete error. It was set up uh, by herself, and she has released all of the documentation surrounding that meeting and the establishment of that meeting to make it clear what happened in the lead-up to those events. Has she or her office sought an undertaking from Honourable Claire Curran 
She has now transferred all appropriate records from her private G Gmail account to her ministerial email accounts so that they can be searched for official information and to ensure that appropriate public, re public records uh, are maintained. Mr Speaker, um, as the member will know, the Official Information Act is mode neutral, regardless of whether or not information um, is held on a Gmail account or a parliamentary account. It is subject to the Official Information Act. That is the key. Uh, the member, though, proactively, when this issue came out, released a number of different pieces of information relating to this particular incident in order to be transparent around what happened. But it's OIA-able. Does she agree with Bryce Edwards' comments that the same mistake by the same person leading to the same serious outcome, misleading Parliament within a few months, is corrosive? And if not, why not? Mr Speaker, I do not. Was David Cormack correct in his New Zealand Herald column on August 27? when he said that the Department of Internal Affairs told the Prime Minister's office about Claire Curran's meeting with Derek Handley. And how does this square with her press conference on August 24, when she said Minister Claire Curran's office alerted her office about the meeting? Uh, Mr Speaker, that is uh, the case. I was alerted by Minister Curran's office. Question number two, Clayton Mitchell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question